and welcome to Mando Bug Crafts, episode 83. What's up everybody? My name is Amanda, but you may know me on the internet as Mando Bug. This is my channel here on YouTube where I talk about the things that I am making. This episode will have knitting, spinning, crochet, some fun with clay, and some life chatter at the end. So let's start the show out with something I've learned. So this last week, actually I think these last two weeks, I've played with clay and I, th I'm absolutely new to this. I've never done this before and there's a lot to be learned. Um, I'm definitely the kind of person that just jumps in both feet, does a little bit of research, but meh, I'd rather learn from doing than sit down and read a book first. Uh, so <laughs> I did some playing with polymer clay which I used Sculpey Bake Clay. I don't know if you can see that with the glare on it. Or Bake Shop. Bake Shop by Sculpey. It's an oven bake clay. So the two biggest things that I learned about this clay in particular, I don't know, I can't speak for other clays. Um, it says do not over bake. It means it. Uh, it will burn. So I burnt some of my things. <laughs> like this cupcake. Uh, I'll show you, see if I can show you up close. Look at the bottoms all burnt. The little bottom piece was just like pink clay, but it got overbaked and it got burnt. Um, and even the white has like a nasty, dingy gray burnt around it. So don't overbake this clay for sure. Uh, the reason it got overbaked, so I made a series of charms with Lori, my mother-in-law, and buttons and charms and beads, and we baked them all together. Well, the baking instructions say 15 minutes for every quarter inch of clay. And we had different sized clay items. We should have removed the smaller ones first and let the bigger ones continue to bake instead of baking them all at once for the same amount of time. But one of the reasons we ended up over baking the clay was because that we couldn't tell when they were done. And it turns out for this clay in particular, if you make something that is thinner than a quarter inch in thickness, it doesn't actually become firm, like really firm. So for example, my mother-in-law made this button, which is just gorgeous. So we used a little, I think it was, um, well, she had a PVC pipe that we used to roll the clay out as even as possible. And then she had like, <laughs> it's for like a sunscreen stick. You know, it looks like a glue stick, but it's sunscreen. Um, we used that for the size of the buttons. And then we used a retractable pin to make the button holes. So that's how the shape was made. But then she also had these really cool stamps that we used to create the impressions. So this one has some fun swirls in it and we did some with snowflakes as well and I really love how the snowflakes turned out oh and after we were done baking them she did put a glaze on them she does those you know those um, what are they? I don't know what you call them but the basically you paint rocks and you hide them out in the woods and then people that find them will share them on social media and hide their own rocks and keep some and I can't, I think there's a name for that, but I don't remember. But she does that, and she used the glaze that she puts on her painted rocks on the buttons and the charms that we made. Um, so yeah, we used a stamp, pressed it into the clay, baked it, then painted it, and um, these ones were really fun because we would like paint and wipe and paint and wipe, and it kind of gives a multi-dimensional color and smeared look to it. But anyways, this button is not a quarter of an inch thick and it's not super stable even though it's been completely baked so I think for this clay specifically you need at least a quarter inch thickness to get a nice solid um, finished baked piece um, for example I made some beads with some clay I was playing around with and um, this is absolutely solid like it's not pliable whatsoever, but it definitely has that minimum quarter inch thickness. Um, so, um, and I may be completely wrong about this. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever done this, but this seems to be what I've learned through our experiment. Um, I did make a variety of other things as well, insert pictures, because everything is so small, it's hard to share. I made candy cane stitch markers. I made, an, I tried to make another pumpkin, but he got burnt. 
Um, I made a handful of buttons and a little Christmas wreath and just played with some clay um, and made these little circle stitch markers as well as some snowflake stitch markers. So, well, and then Emily made a button. <laughs> it kind of looks like a pig nose though. Um, but it was a lot of fun to play with clay and I definitely want to keep adventuring into playing with it. I just have a lot to learn. So that is what I learned this week. So moving on to finished objects, I have been on this serious Operation Whip Down kick. Like, you guys heard me last week talk about how I frogged over 10 projects. I just want to clean up what I've got going on, which can be difficult sometimes. And here comes the sun right in my eye. Uh, let me fix that. Okay, back under control. So Operation Whip Down, I just want to, I'm trying to clean things up. You know, I'm trying the, the new year's about to start and I want to I want to have a fresh start. So I've been focusing on finishing my works in progress before casting on new. No matter how excited and motivated I am to work on the project, I got some great advice from a fellow crocheter that basically said, you know, it can wait. It can wait. I know you're excited, but if it's that exciting to you, it's gonna be even more exciting when you get to finishing it and you know, stop leaving these works in progress behind. And she's so right. So, I have finished a few things in the last two weeks. I finished the second fur bird. This one is for my son Jack. And let me just say, this one is what it's supposed to look like. The other fur bird that I made was taller and a little bit wonkier and looked more like a Furby. Wasn't supposed to do that. I messed up on that one, and I think I talked about that a couple episodes ago. This one, I did not mess up. I was right on track. He looks just like the little fur birds in Angry Birds, and he's so cute. Uh, I just absolutely love him. My kids love him. This is such a great free pattern. I definitely suggest you try it out. So I crocheted this little guy holding two strands at once, one of Haiku Simplicity and one of Haiku Caribou, which is this fun fur that's super duper soft. Um, in the pattern she recommends that you brush out the fun fur to give it more of a natural appearance, but I found with this caribou in particular, um, it's so soft that you could actually brush the fibers out of the original string and I didn't want to make a naked bird so I didn't brush mine out and I don't recommend brushing it if you use caribou. Uh, I still think it looks fine, not brushed. So ton of fun. Uh, the eyes I made out of felt and sewed on and these eyes are from 6060 Eyes. I bought a multicolor pack of plastic eyes. And uh, so what else did I finish? I finished my crochet socks. These are the birch cable socks that I crocheted out of Haiku Kobasi which is a wool free sock. So right after finishing these I wore them the rest of the day and threw them in the washing machine and it was so nice to just let them go through the laundry cycle and uh, so I really enjoyed that and I wanted to see how it was going to affect the sock and the fiber and I mean they look just like they did right after I finished them so they have this gorgeous cable down the top of the sock which these little cables down the side were supposed to be mirrored but I misread the instructions and I didn't mirror them but it's not the end of the world, you can't really tell. tell. Um, you finish the toe before you do the heel, which I found um, difficult to get a perfect fit. If I were to make these again, which I probably won't because I just typically don't make the same pattern more than once, but it, for anyone else interested in making these, I would recommend finishing the heel first. I mean, you will have to cut your yarn and stop after the before you start your toe, which is just an extra two ends to weave in. But if you have your heel in, when you're closing, decreasing down and closing off your toe, you can make sure you get a perfect fit because the heel's pretty much set in its size. Um, so doing the heel last, I wasn't sure if they were going to fit. Uh, they are like just a smidge, smidge, smidge too big, but it, they're still comfortable. I enjoy them. Um, and I know some of you have asked me on Instagram, uh, what what does it wear like? Um, I've heard some people say that crochet socks actually are rough on their feet, which um, you know I haven't heard. I've never crocheted socks before, so I don't know if it's the fact that the majority of this sock is 
crocheted using an extended single crochet which is not super common or if it's the yarn but these socks are not rough on my feet although the one thing I will say about these socks is that they are denser than a fingering weight knit sock so these are fingering weight crocheted they are denser than I would expect they're denser than a knitted fingering weight sock so this fingering weight crocheted sock feels and wears much more like a heavy sport or DK knit sock. So it's definitely going to be thicker. Um, it does have give. It stretches over my heel, no problem. But it doesn't have as much give as a knit sock. So at the moment, I still prefer my knit socks over these crocheted socks. But not to say I don't like them. I do like them. Um, just not as much as knitted. It was fun to make socks a different way. Um, and I really enjoyed this patterning on the toe and the heel. Um, I mean, it doesn't really give the pattern away, but you are doing half double crochets through the back bar, which actually reminds me, I had to rip back my toe on my first sock because I went, oh yeah, back bar, back loop, same thing. Not same thing, and I should have realized that. I just thought it was a you know, interchangeable term, but it turns out it's not. Uh, in half double crochet only, there isn't a bar behind the back loop, and that allows you to have these two loops that stay in the front of your work. That's the top of your half double crochet that's showing. By working in the back loop, it forces those two top, the two top loops forward, and it creates like a horizontal knit stitch is what it looks like to me and I think it's nice um, I was worried about having that on the heel being like a weird texture but it's not and I think it's actually gonna make a really strong reinforced heel I am curious to see how durable these socks are over time because I have a feeling these are gonna be way more durable than my knit socks um, but it just leads me to believe that sock knitted is better for socks and crochet is better for more like a house sock or a slipper, not something that's necessarily going to go into shoes. I think this may be just a little too thick to go into shoes. So um, overall, the pattern was really great. I have detailed notes on my Ravelry project page, which of course will be linked down below. Um, just kind of going over my thoughts and uh, recommendations for this pattern, but overall, I think the designer was just on point with everything she put into the pattern. She put thought into each and every stitch and I think it shows. Um, I think she did a great job. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm pleased. And you know another thing that's interesting is that these are my first ever crocheted socks. The first ever socks that I cast on to knit were also top down um, and cabled. I, the, something about cable socks draws me in, although I there it's more work than a vanilla. I just I think cable socks are gorgeous. Um, so yeah, one more finished object which I've been wearing is this Lorelei shawl. Now this shawl is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. The design, the hand dyed yarns. I did not enjoy knitting this pattern at all, and has nothing to do with the way that it looks or the way that it's written, it has everything to do with the fact that it is a pattern that requires you to pay attention. And I find that difficult for me now when I try to knit or crochet while watching my kids. I can't have the focus that I need or like it that I used to have while crafting because I'm constantly interrupted and having to keep an eye out. I'm easily distracted and disrupted from where I am. Uh, this this shape, the shape of this shawl, it's gorgeous. You start out small and you it creates this like swooping shape which does dip at the bottom here like a triangle but it swoops out the other side as well. Um, I've never knit a shawl that has been this shape before but I, I love the shape. I hated knitting it. It is a six row repeat to get this shape on top of increasing in pattern so you you really have to pay attention every row uh, it's worth it it's worth it but I struggled and that's why it took me so long to finish this shawl this was for the makers mercantile this is the Lorelei shawl it was for their Lorelei knit along and I used schmutzarella yarns um, on her dude base 
the cheese balls colorway. And then in the mosaic section, I used Fine Height in the white color and Schmutzarella's on her Spectacular, which is a sparkle base, Edith. And originally I had planned to use the white Fine Height for the lace, but once I finished the mosaic, I just couldn't picture the shawl finished in white. I needed the orange. I was worried that I didn't have enough yarn and I was correct because I had a partial skein. I only had 80 grams because I used this yarn to make the um, brioche hat by Andrea Mowry. Um, something prim, vintage prim. Uh, so I only had 80 grams and I was right. I ran out. I'm supposed to have a six row garter stitch border at the bottom here and I was only able to do two rows before binding off but you can't really tell and I'm okay with that. So I, I did love, I do love this shawl. I did not love knitting it um, and I'm just gonna have to be more conscious about the patterns that I cast on in the future until I have some more uninterrupted time or maybe make sure that uh, I only have one project going that requires concentration and that can be my in the morning late at night project when the kids are asleep because uh, having multiple projects that I need to pay attention to means having a lot of projects that don't get a lot of um, of my time which adds to the whip pile which is not what Operation Whip Down is about um, so I did finish one other project actually so um, my mother-in-law Lori has a friend that wants a bobble hat. I love these bobble hats. I've knit a few of them. I don't know if I've really talked about them on the podcast before. It used to be a free pattern. It is now a pay-for pattern. Um, and this is, this is my fourth one. So I knit one for my daughter, one for my son, one for me, and now this one. But this was a total fail. So this hat is way too big. This is what happens when you don't when you don't do your gauge swatch and you don't pay attention to gauge. Um, like even like, I don't like it. She doesn't want a slouchy hat. This pattern is meant to be a beanie. Um, so that's this one, and I knit it using a combination of acrylic yarns, Hobby Lobby's I love this yarn and Vanna's Choice that um, was in the stash combined of me and my mother-in-law. This is an older one that I knit myself, and I didn't put it on Ravelry, I didn't write down notes, um, and I should have, because this one fits. It's a little big, I would like it a little smaller, but it is a better fit than this one. Now, the original pattern has a rolled brim, and the recipient wanted a rolled brim, so that's why the brim's rolled. I don't, I didn't, I like a rolled brim, but I didn't want it on this hat, so I didn't do that for myself. Um, but I obviously cut some rows out of the pattern and I obviously went down some needle sizes because my gauge between these two hats is different. But I couldn't remember that I did that. So I ended up with this huge hat. So if you guys aren't super familiar about gauge or why it's really important, let me give you a little background story on this hat. So this hat, it calls for air and weight yarn. And specifically, it calls for Jameson's of Shetland Heather Aaron um, that comes in 50 gram balls. It doesn't give you the yardage on here, um, but that's not super important. What's important is your gauge. The gauge for this hat is supposed to be 23 stitches over 4 inches. The gauge that I got on this hat with the same size needles was 19 stitches over four inches. So I was off by four stitches per inch, or four stitches per four inches, about a stitch per inch. So what ended up happening is what was supposed to be a 16.7 inch brim circumference became a 20 inch brim circumference. What was supposed to be a four inch length brim became a 5.2 inch brim. What was supposed to be a 20.9 inch body circumference became a 25.2 inch body circumference. And um, what was supposed to be a seven inch total hat became a nine inch total hat, all because I was off one stitch per inch. This is why this is so important. And so you see how it affects a hat, imagine how it affects a sweater. Not good. 
the yarn I used for this is um, Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn of Vanna's Choice, which is a worsted, eh, heavy worsted. It's not Erin. So you would think I would have got a smaller gauge. So you can't always go off the weight of the recommended yarn. You really have to go off of the gauge for the pattern. That is what the, is the most important. That is what gives you your final size. I should have paid more attention going into this, but as many of us knitters, you're like, eh, gauge, smage, cast on, go. Everyone else knit one, it's fine. <laughs> no. So, because I'm going to get paid for this hat, I cannot give her a hat that doesn't fit. So, I've been giving you guys numbers, right? I obviously sat down and did the math of the gauge and the stitches and the pattern and what it should be, what my gauge was, why my hat ended up the size it did, and I've figured out that in order to knit the hat with this yarn, the size that it needs to be, I need to cast on less stitches considerably and cut out pattern repeats of the chart. Now I don't, because it's not a pay, it's not a free pattern anymore, I don't want to give away too much of the numbers, but um, I am cutting out an entire repeat, which is a 30 stitch repeat. And with repeats that are that big, you're really kind of caught in how easily you can modify the pattern um, without having to do heavy modifications. Turns out for me, if I cut an entire 30 stitch repeat out of the hat, the hat will be a 19 inch body circumference, which is still a reasonable size for a hat. So that is what I'm going to be doing. But yeah, I mean, gauge really does matter despite not wanting to knit gauge swatches because now I've knit an entire hat, which I did knit all in one day, by the way. I was pretty impressed with myself. Um, it's mostly all I did that day besides, you know, cook dinner and stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, this is just, anybody have a big head? <laughs> this needs to go to a big head person. 25 inch head? Anybody? <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, still learning lessons I already know just paying the price I guess <laughs> um, so yeah I showed you I've started the second hat so that's one of my works in progress my other works in progress um, have included whipping down it one project that's pretty old actually very old I think it is my oldest work in progress um, is this snowflake blanket which I actually think I showed on the very first episode of Mando Bug Crafts over four years ago. Um, don't go back and watch that episode, by the way. It's horrible. Um, I was actually telling Stephanie the other day, I was so nervous to record my first uh, at least like 10 episodes that I couldn't get in front of the camera without having an angry fireball, which is an angry orchard with a shot of fireball in it. And it was probably more than just a shot because I would drink down the whole neck of the bottle and then fill it up with fireball. Um, and that was the only way I could relax to force myself to do this. I don't talk a lot about, um, the social anxiety that, um, I've worked to overcome throughout the years. Um, doing this podcast is part of that. Um, you know, I, it was pretty bad when I was in middle school, but as I got older, I learned that I needed to overcome it. And I started putting myself in situations that were uncomfortable until they became comfortable. Um, definitely slow and steady, and I still struggle at times, but um, yeah, those first few episodes were rough, so I don't recommend watching them. Some of you have watched them, and uh, I don't know how, <laughs> but uh, the, the podcast has definitely come a long way. Um, well, and so have I as a crafter. I've learned so much. So this snowflake blanket is a free pattern by Red Heart that's actually, I wonder if I can find it. Um, It was actually a flyer that I found hanging uh, on the aisle at Hobby Lobby. So I snagged it and I decided I was going to crochet this blanket for Josh's mom, Melissa. So I've been working on it since 2012 and I've made pretty good progress. I uh, decided to alter the size a little bit. I think the original one calls for... The original blanket calls for six rows of seven motifs, and I decided to do seven rows of eight motifs, which, I mean, is a very slight modification just to make it larger. But you make these snowflakes, and in the last round, you join them as you go. 
And so I have three rows done. Let's see if I can. The original blanket is just meant to be a lap throw, and I wanted it to be a little bit larger of a lap throw um, so that in the holiday season it could be a really cute accent blanket for a couch. Now, as you're joining, you get these giant holes that are left in between the snowflakes. There is a second smaller motif that is made and joined in the final round to fill in these gaps. So once I get my seven by eight rows, I will be able to go back and finish the smaller holes with the smaller motif. Um, I've already made all of the snowflakes and I stopped two rounds before they were done because that's when you switch colors and then that's when you get to join. So I have these little tin packs that I had made with the snowflake up to two rounds before it's done and I bundled them in packs of tin so I could easily keep track of how many I had made and so I've just been picking one up doing my round doing the last round and joining as you go. So, um, it's been interesting. It's I'm crocheting it with Red Heart Super Saver uh, because that's the color the pattern's made it and I, when I was at the store I was like, that's what it has to be. So this is the Shaded Dusk color and then there's also the white accents. So I've been working with that but it's been so long since I've worked with Red Heart Super Saver and this is bought back in 2012 so I think they've changed their yarn since then but this stuff um, after working on it for a little while is rough on my hands um, it's very scratchy and um, it starts to like chafe my fingers so um, that may be a reason I stopped working on it uh, but I've picked it back up I'm gonna finish it I don't know how soon I'd like to finish all my whips before the new year but I'm not gonna press myself to do that I don't want this to be a stressful experience so, um, yeah, I'm crocheting that. And then I also picked up an older knitted work in progress, which is the Betwixt Blanket Cape. This was a knit along that was hosted by Scassell last January. And it is giant. Um, you know, I've got these giant works in progress. When I look at my whips, I have three blankets, two giant shawls, and then some other miscellaneous projects. Um, so part of what's kept me from finishing these projects is just the sheer size and amount of crafting required um, to, to make them slash finish them. So I'm going to try to show this the best I can, but right here is your neck. And this, whoops, I don't want to lose it off the needles, but this all hangs down the back and I have oh, all of my front knit. So you have like these front panels that hang in the front and then the rest of it is connected down the back and it's like a big poncho cape um, I may have to insert a picture of it um, for you to really be able to see because I can't get far enough away to show this to you in its entirety but it's really really beautiful pattern it's knit out of Haiku Kinsey and I knit it using the salted gray and the it's a wine. It's a wine name. Malbec. And this one doesn't say, but I think it's gray, salted gray, gray salt, something like that. It's very interesting because this one has flecks of like a light purple in it and on its own it kind of looks like a dark blue that's got a shades of purple in it but next to the gray it just looks almost black <laughs> which is fine by me I was just surprised how it turned out once you put the two colors together um, so I've been knitting on this I still have a ways to go but this is mindless and easy to work on while watching the kids um, for the most part there's these large sections of stockinette that are just striped and there's only four sections of um, color work and I've already completed one two three so I just have the fourth one which is near the end so it'll be easy to get through because I'll be motivated to finish it up um, there's only one other work in progress that I've been working on and that has been spinning this gorgeous gorgeous fiber that I got from Vogue Knitting Live from Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill. 
this is just lovely, lovely fiber. It's a merino bamboo blend. I, it did not specify the ratio. I have an inkling that it's majority bamboo. She had told me the black is merino and the red is bamboo. And this is majorly red with very, very few um, amounts, a small amount of black in it. Um, it's spinning up beautifully. This is the first single that I've completed and I'm shooting for a fingering weight single that I'm going to fold um, so that I can knit the Half Moon Oracle shawl with it. Um, it was a struggle to spin at first uh, because the bamboo and the merino in there have different staple lengths and I was struggling to get the feel of it. Um, after, you know, a few yards I was able to, I think, get it consistently going but um, the color. The color is what sold me the, sh the color, the sheen, and it's really, really soft. So um, I've started the second bobbin. I'm about halfway through. This is all I have left. So I'm excited to finish that, but I don't want to finish it too soon because I'm just going to be um, itching to cast on. And as I've said, Operation Whip Down, no casting on. So, well, with the exception of the commissioned hat. <laughs> so that's all I have for works in progress. Which takes me to design time. I ripped out the cowl. I did. I ripped out the cowl and I started a new stitch pattern. And I think I'm going to rip that out too. So um, I'm finding that I'm struggling to come up with a design in a solid color for this yarn. I just, I'm not loving what I'm doing. So I cast on and I wanted to add, I really like the bobble puff stitches with this yarn. I, I like the way they look, I like the way it feels, but I haven't quite got the stitch pattern that I want yet. So um, this one is going to get ripped out and I just, back to the drawing board. I'm just not loving it, so I'm not going to try to force it. Um, but I haven't really worked on designing much because I'm trying to whip down. Uh, I, my Dura poncho is out to testers at the moment and almost everyone got stuck at the same point. I feel horrible. I just, you know, I'm working on my skills when it comes to writing patterns and I want to make a video tutorial, well I want to, I will make a video tutorial for this pattern but when it's released, but I want the instructions to stand alone at the moment. So I'm not giving my testers a video because I want people to be able to figure it out without a video. Um, so I need to fix my words and the way that I am writing this out. So one thing that I've found that is going to make a difference is in one round, in order to decrease the size of the written instructions, I and have more repeats of a bracket versus more brackets with fewer repeats, I said skip one stitch, work a single crochet in the next stitch what would be easier to follow is if instead of saying stitch, I said exactly what the stitch was. Um, it's not the same every time, which means I have to write out more of the row, but it's easier for people to tell when they're off. And that's something I hadn't really considered, because um, if it says skip one double crochet, single crochet, and next chain, if, you're not ha if you don't have a chain next, you know you're off. So. Um, that's something I've learned about designing and writing patterns so far. Um, something I just hadn't really put much thought into. Um, so I thought I would share that with you guys. Um, and take the opportunity to give a huge thank you out to my testers. Um, because, I mean, I'm a new designer. I'm new at writing patterns. It's more difficult to test for me. And I appreciate, um, I appreciate those that are testing for me. Um, so moving on to check it out, so I wanted to tell you guys about these new pants we got in at work. So I work at Baker's Mercantile. This is not sponsored in any way. I do not have affiliate links at all, but we got these new pants in and I think they're so cool and I wanted to share them with you guys. So they are leggings, but more specifically they're like athletic leggings. They're um, a high performance spandex material that's got, you know, wick technology and all that. It feels like when you go buy like Nike workout pants, um, Nike workout leggings. That's the material is very durable and um, high performance is the best way to describe it. But they have knit 
on like they're not so how do I describe this there are images of knit patterns on these leggings so there are leggings that are just like stripy stockinette there are entrelac leggings and then there are leggings that look like comic books but instead of like pal they say like knit two together or cast on or stuff like other knitting terms um, and I just thought these pants were so cool and unlike anything else I've seen out there I have yet to pick up myself a pair because I am on a budget at the moment the holidays are quickly approaching so I have to wait to get myself a pair but I thought I would share them with you guys if you haven't seen them yet because they're pretty awesome um, and like they they do run big I think um, or so I've heard everyone having to go down a size from what they would originally order and uh, but another thing that's cool about them is when you put them on they don't you know how some things that have images printed on them that stretch when they stretch it gets white these do not do that they're very high quality so um, if you're interested check it out um, that brings me to let's chat so I'm feeling dry Let's chat. This is a segment where I talk about non-crafty related things. So if you are not interested, thank you for spending the amount of time with me that you did. I super appreciate it and I will catch you next week. Otherwise, you can stay tuned for chatty stuff. Um, so I didn't record last week. Uh, that is because I got sick. I got sick at work which is horrible. And I was also supposed to be teaching a class that night. So I teach classes at Makers Mercantile, um, generally beginner classes, you know, knitting. I taught some beginner knitting classes, some beginner crochet classes, and some beginner spinning classes. And I was supposed to be teaching spinning, drop spindle 101, and I got sick. Uh, luckily, someone else was able to teach the class for me, but I had to come home and I you know, I wasn't feeling good and I wasn't sure if I'd be sick the next day, so I already was like not gonna record. Um, I don't know what was wrong. I just like, I started with a really bad headache and then my stomach started hurting and then I took an ibuprofen and then after that I just felt like I was gonna throw up. So I don't, I still don't even know what happened. I thought maybe it was something I ate, but I've had food poisoning before um, <laughs> from the military chow hall. So I know what food poisoning is like, and um, you have to go see a doctor when you get food poisoning, because it's horrible. Um, it, this was not that. It just was like a migraine with a nausea. I never did throw up. Um, for a second I was like, am I pregnant? But I'm not. But it almost felt like that. It was just weird. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what happened um, and why I didn't record last week. Um, but. I mean, I'm feeling better now, and I'm actually really excited today because this is my last week of online college classes for my bachelor's degree. I just took one of my finals. The only thing, so that class is done. The only class, uh, the other class I'm taking, the only other thing I have to do is write a two to three page paper. It's for my capstone close class. It's like a reflection on my degree. I don't think it's going to be difficult, um, and then I'm done. I'm done. I have finished all of my requirements and I just have to wait for degree conferment in February and then I will have my bachelor's degree in business administration which is going to be so exciting for me. Um, I wasn't sure that I was actually going to be able to do it and honestly if I didn't get money for going to school from the GI Bill I'm not sure that I would have done it at least this soon. It has been very difficult being a stay-at-home mom having a part-time job, and also doing school full-time online. It, it's been very stressful, and I'm so excited that it's over. <laughs> so, uh, and right around the hol the start of the holidays, right? So Thanksgiving is coming up. Um, for me, I'm recording the day before Thanksgiving, so Thanksgiving is tomorrow. You may have already had your Thanksgiving if you're an American. Of course, I'm assuming you're an American. Um, so if you are an American, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving or have a great Thanksgiving depending on when you see this. It's just such a wonderful time to uh, spend with your family and uh, I'm looking forward to spending time with mine. We will be deep frying a turkey, which my husband does. It scares me every single time. I can't even be around it, uh, but it's really, really good. Um, and then I'll be making all of the side dishes and desserts. Um, we're going to do pumpkin pie and peach cobbler this year. Just because I can't live without pumpkin pie, nobody else really cares for it. Um, and my husband requested peach cobbler, so 
that's what we're we're doing for desserts a little less traditional uh, do you guys cook anything for Thanksgiving that is traditional to you but maybe not um, a traditional Thanksgiving dish I would be very interested to hear about that uh, let me know in the comments below um, but yeah it's it's just amazing time to be thankful um, and I'm thankful for so much uh, like the biggest thing is I'm just thankful to be here, to be alive. I'm finally at a point in my life where I'm very happy and I, I love life and I get excited about, you know, just the opportunity to wake up every day, really. Um, so um, it's a great time to reflect on that. Um, so, oh, I also wanted to say thank you to everyone that took the time to uh, answer my poll that I created in the last video. It was a resounding, do not change the format of your podcast, um, which I didn't expect, and I super appreciate the feedback, so now I know to keep it the same and don't change it. Um, so, thank you for everyone that took the time to do that. Um, and then, I think that's pretty much it. Emily... Uh, my daughter, she went with, she comes with me, of course, she comes with me to Lori's, my mother-in-law's, on Sundays, and Lori generally sets her up with some crafts, and I think about, well, these last two weekends, both Sundays, she has made some ornaments with pony beads, and I thought it would be fun to give her a chance to talk to you guys about it, so let's see if that can happen. You want to show everybody the button you made? Oh, you want to show them the ornaments? Okay, go ahead, show them. You gotta lift it up high. Oh, yeah, okay. And if we put our hand behind it, see, it will focus on there. No, it's focusing on your face, but... Wow, so d you made that with beads? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, uh, did you make anything else? Uh, no. No? What about the candy canes? No. Do you want to show them the candy canes? No, I want to show the buttons. You want to show the buttons? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's a bead. Did you make this button? Uh, no. No? I think you did. Can you show them the pink button you made? What's this? That's a stitch marker Mommy made. Ooh, look at this. It's a big one. That's a big one. You want to show everybody? What is it? That's, it's a big candy cane. That's a candy cane? Or no. it's a button? Big button. Big button. What color is that? It's... it's Red and yellow. Red and yellow? Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Emily, thank you for being on here and showing us your crafts. Can you say bye? Bye. Bye. All right, so that's all I have for you guys this week. Hopefully I will catch you next week. And until then, happy crafting. Bye.